Nintendo Nation. Hey guys and girls, it's John from Nintendo Nation, back with another review. If you grew up in the late 80s and through the 90s, odds are you have played a game in similar style to the mystery of Wooly Mountain. Point and click games were all the rage in the early age of PC gaming, in part because they lend themselves so well to a mouse and keyboard. If I am being completely honest, it's not a genre I am too familiar with, at least not anymore. But when I was a young whippersnapper, I cut my teeth on these games. With King's Quest and Space Quest, a quick search on the interweb shows that the genre might be making a little comeback, and the mystery of Wooly Mountain is a reminder of why I have fond memories of these games I mentioned. It's not just that they were one of the only genre of games to play, even though that's true. A well-crafted point-and-click adventure game is really a thing of beauty. And that's why I still bring up King's Quest IV when talking about some of my favorite games. The mystery of Wooly Mountain does what a good point-and-click is meant to do, and that's to make the player think. There's a certain element of luck in every point-and-click game, because if you get stuck, you can always revert to trying every item with every interactable object. However, Wooly Mountain does a really nice job at trying to avoid this for the player by offering dialogue hints. The most enjoyable puzzle solving came from real detective work, and even though I did a lot of the old click here with this item, I did it mostly because I'm really just not that good at this type of puzzle solving. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. However, a lot of clues can be found in the rooms or areas, whether it be in books or on posters or little notes hung up by the crew. With no subtitles, this also requires actually listening to the dialogue. How to make bull bearings. Juan, grab two. I would love to grab a handful of sticky, gloopy, wet sap. But maybe I should use something to soak it up. Something I find is lost in today's gaming world by default. I typically turn subtitles off when I can because I think it's important to listen to the dialogue in a game rather than read it. I appreciate that the Lightfoot Brothers, developers of Wooly Mountain, don't even give me the option to space out. On top of being a well-designed point-and-click game, Wooly Mountain also adds some very likable and quirky characters. The main character, Garland Vanderbilt, spends most of his time during the game getting his crew to actually want to save their friend and companion, Van Damme. Unfortunately, they seem to always be dealing with something far more important, at least to them. This leads to a fun back and forth with Garland practically begging them to move to a certain spot and the crew resisting. And on a side note, I absolutely adore Garland as a character. The mustache, top hat, even the way he waddles his way around, his wit keeps the game from ever becoming stale. He's a great lead for the game. To actually get the crew to move, well, that's where the puzzle solving comes in. There's the drunk, Carlton, who won't do anything as long as his movie is playing and he has a glass of moonshine to gulp. Otto suddenly malfunctions and must be reminded why he is friends with the humans. Frithel is always tied up in an experiment that Garland must solve for him. Cladney is obsessed with his love Edna and isn't much use while she is on his mind. And last is the librarian, Manrose. He wants to act on stage, but he is better at finding ways to get in the way while pretending to be something else. Shoo! Shoo! Please don't shoot! There are plenty of other characters to interact with too, and they can get pretty quirky. As I mentioned, the story revolves around rescuing Van Damme from Wooly Mountain. He has been kidnapped by the evil witch after he ventured off on his own to try to save a group of children, also kidnapped by the witch. There's some time travel elements, some evil minions, and lots of puzzling and adventure. Speaking of the puzzles, I would be very surprised if a fan of the genre were disappointed by the puzzles in this game. I feel like I just need to bring this up because the puzzles are nicely balanced for the most part. Difficult enough to make you think of an experiment, but not so difficult to have you banging your head off the wall, even though Garland will say this exact line when an item is being used in the wrong way. You should get used to being called a dunce too. Your mother taught you better than that. That's not a great idea. Fun fact, the Lightfoot brothers are also musicians. The original soundtrack for the game is really well done. Somewhere around 20 tracks, there's lots of variety, from the upbeat tracks that become so familiar in the submarine, to the serene soft tones of Roland's Domain, and the upbeat vinyl tracks that can be played on the record player. Let's give Wilson a spin.
The game does suffer from some audio issues though, just in terms of continuity. There are a few times where the voice audio is really quiet, maybe an oversight in development. And then other times it just seems too quiet, even though there's nothing technically causing a problem. I highly suggest going into the options menu and adjusting the voice audio all the way up and the music down just a bit. The dialogue in the game is too important to the puzzle solving, so you'll want to be able to hear the voices clearly. To take the audio issues one step further, if I were to complain about something in the game, it would be that some of the characters are difficult to understand just based on how they speak. The evil witch and her minions are very difficult to understand, and the same can be said for Otto. They're Otto. I will have no further dealings with humans. This is where I'm. It's not impossible, but as I was playing the game, I noticed that unless I had complete silence around me, I literally could not understand what they were saying. It's a minor complaint, honestly, but I wish I could understand them a little easier. This is a game that lends itself really well to the Switch. Handheld mode has full touch screen support, and for a point and click, it doesn't get faster or more efficient. Oh wow, Wooly Mountain on uh, the handheld is really fun to play. I've got all the coal I need. <laughs> it's really. This could and should be the preferred play style for most people. Though, if you prefer to play on the TV or in regular handheld mode, the controller options work surprisingly well too, with a cursor that can be moved around the screen with the left thumbstick. Head to the options again if you want to increase cursor speed. I'm sure you will want to. One oddity of the game is that the action button is mapped to B. In an age where almost every game uses B as the back button, it's a little difficult to understand why they chose this input method. Oh well. The Mystery of Wooly Mountain does everything you'd expect of a really good point-and-click game. As I said, I'm no expert in the genre, but I feel like the Lightfoot Brothers are off to a good start with their game development. There are some things to iron out, for certain, and without spoiling anything, some story elements didn't make a whole lot of sense in the end, but it's a charming game with clever puzzle solving. Retro gamers, including Nintendo fans, will have lots to like about this, as the developers have many references to old-school gaming. Fans of the point-and-click genre will be happy, and newcomers might find a reason to explore other games after finishing this one up. Nintendo Nation gives it a like, and 7 clicks out of 10.